This project was absolutely crazy, and it was one of the most ambitious and enjoyable things I had done and was actually able to complete. This was a project for NIFA semester two, but I had written the first draft before semester one had even ended. I was super excited to get into this because I had the idea for a really long time, but I didn't really know how to do it. But once I finally figured out how I want to tell the story, it just clicked and I went into full on writing mode. And as soon as I finished the first draft, I sent it to Kirk, who plays Jamie Cooper in A Presence Behind the Door. I got to know Kirk because he was friends with one of my old roommates, and Kirk is a really chill dude. I heard he was an actor, and I didn't realize this till later, but I had actually seen Kirk act before. He was in a short film I watched like a year before I even came down to Los Angeles. He was really good in that, and he already sold me as an amazing actor. So as soon as I finished the first draft, I sent him an email talking about the script, and I also sent the first draft to him and said, hey, if you're interested in this, you already have the part, and he accepted. After that, we did draft after draft in class. My classmates would give me feedback along with my screenwriting instructor, and I took the notes and I add them into the script, and some were very helpful, so I gotta thank my classmates and my screenwriting teacher for that. Halfway through semester two, we had this project called the POV, the point of view, where we take a scene from our digital dialogue and we shoot it with two emotional points of views. There's no real scene like that in A Presence Behind the Door, so basically what I did was I reworked the ending. Instead of setting it in an apartment, I set it in the chief's office, and it was just the officer that shoots Jamie. I had already cast Arthur as the police officer, but he wasn't able to show, so I filled in, and I had not cast a chief yet, so I had Kirk play chief. I feel like it turned out pretty good, and uh, we showed that project in class and it was sort of test footage or a debut of what was to come and uh, they absolutely loved it they thought Kirk was a very good chief and I was like oh well he's not actually gonna be chief he's gonna be Jamie I, I got some weird looks and they were like what but he's such a good chief and I was I was agreeing with them. I was like yeah he's a great chief but he's gonna be a way better Jamie since I still had no chief and I had a month before the shoot, I had to quickly hold auditions for chief. There were, there were a few options, but I opted to go with Freddy because he had a very passionate drive and I hadn't even told him what the screenplay was about. He had no idea what the story was, but when he came in, he was super excited. Uh, he took direction very easily and I knew it'd be fun working with him on set. And he had such a strong presence as the chief that I feel like he'd be able to fill in the shoes. Finally, it got to May, and we shot the thing. What was important for me for on set was that all the sound design was done prior. All the sound effects that you hear, like the news broadcast and the whispers, those were played live on set for Kirk so he could really get into character. I thought it really helped the atmosphere. Which, fun fact, I actually shot the news broadcast with Cece and Jacob back in Longview during my semester break before semester two even started. Originally, we shot it with a green screen. The plan was to show her on the TV, but that was before I decided that this wasn't very much of a visual thing. It was more of an audible thing, something you'd have to hear. The first time everyone heard the sound effects, my crew and Kirk were sort of creeped out by it. So I was like, okay, we're getting somewhere. During the whisper sequence, I had a sort of workstation in the living room. I had the script, my laptop hooked up to the TV for the speakers, and I'd hit play and pause for whenever the whispers would talk, so Kirk would actually be able to bounce off of the whispers and feel like he had an acting partner in the scene. It helps in real time and in the edit. Who said that? The project took two days to shoot. We did two days back to back, and at the end of it, I was very proud of what we had. Gio was amazing on camera. Brian and Steven made a great sound crew. The actors were absolutely fantastic. I had to thank Alice for teaching me the makeup effect that I needed for the gunshot wounds. And Ricardo, you were a good AC. I quickly went to post and started editing because I was really excited with what we had. I did five cuts for NIFA, then turned it in for my digital dialogue assignment. My director loved it, my editing teacher loved it. It was great, but wasn't quite where I wanted it to be yet. 
I did three other cuts after that and finally decided, okay, it's ready for festivals and we put it in. And I'm very proud of what we got. We got two honorable mentions from the LA Underground Forum and Hollywood New Directors, and then we won Best Short Horror for the LA Shorts Awards. And it was an absolute honor to win those, and I'm very happy. Everyone who's seen the final cut of the film before the official online release has been super supportive, they love it, and I'm really glad they do, because I love this project too. All in all, I hope you have enjoyed A Presence Behind the Door and this behind the scenes look into it. From here, I'm gonna be shooting my intermediate project, which will be shot around February 2019, and uh, more collaborations with Jacob, Darkfire Productions, and stuff like that, and maybe some more short films along the way. You never know when where it comes, and whenever it does, I'm gonna keep you guys updated on what I'm doing because I'm down here in Los Angeles, I'm living the dream, and this short film was just the beginning, hopefully. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you around.